Thanks for stopping by. This is Dan Bell of Bell Certified. Today we're talking about 35 U.S.C. 102A, the public use prong, and the concepts of conception, reduction to practice, um, and secrecy, and reverse engineering. Uh, first I'll read uh, 102A uh, for you. A person shall be entitled to a patent unless the invention was known or used by others in this country before the invention thereof by the applicant for patent. So specifically we're talking about public use and, and not patents, uh, prior art or publications. So 102A is the subject, public use. And my penmanship is going to win me an award, no doubt. Um, and we're and the other thing that you should realize is we're talking about process claims, right? And so, um, let me just now in the reading materials um, there is a discussion of prior public use. And by the way, this is this is a discussion related to an invalidity analysis course we're giving, and we use YouTube as a way uh, for the students to watch videos. Not all of the course material is on YouTube, um, not the re reading materials and testing and, and much of the course, in fact, uh, but that's what this is. Uh, so prior public use and the course materials is defined as the non-secret, or at least one of the definitions, the, the non-secret use of the claimed process by another in the usual course of producing articles for commercial purposes is a public use if it occurs before this applicant's day of invention. Now, when, uh, as we've talked about before, when the, when the inventor, well, I'm sorry, when your lawyer, I should say, gives you a, a target patent, it has a filing date, that's what the F stands for. We kn we'd never know the invention date, uh, uh, it's unusual that we'll know the invention date. When the lawyer is given a patent, by a company that wants revenue from the lawyer's client, uh, they want licensing revenue. They just give them the patent and say, hey, we think you're infringing our patent, and therefore it pays some licensing revenue. Uh, and the lawyer d does what's called an invalidity analysis to see whether or not, indeed, uh, their client uh, should pay any money. That's one part of it. Then the other part is what's called infringement analysis. And so this this is uh, 102. 102 is how you determine what's prior art or what isn't prior art. Today we're talking about one kind of prior art called public use. And so they hand you this patent that has a filing date and you go out and you find another company that has produced, uh, that has publicly used, and that's the U right here, they publicly used this uh, process commercially uh, in the United States before the presumed in invention date, which is the, c what we call the constructive reduction to practice, uh, which is, um, well, let me tell you about that in a moment after I tell you first what a reduction to practice is. So so the lawyer gives this um, proof of, of public use by another company to the owner of this patent, and the owner of the patent does uh, checks with the inventors uh, at his company, and, they, and he finds out that they built a, what's called a working model or a reduction to practice of the uh, claim language of this invention uh, before this public use. Therefore, uh, since 102A requires the prior art to be before the day of invention, uh, it, this is an example of, uh, this is not prior art, right? Because they've shown invention. They've shown invention here, a reduction to practice before the prior art date. Uh, the second way um, that this happens, the way that the inventor turns, uh, proves it's not prior art is, I'll show you next. Same thing, lawyer gives you a patent, you do some research, boom, you find public, public use now, remember we're talking about, and uh, this, and the lawyer gives this, um, proof of public use to the other, s to the owner of the patent. The owner of the patent says, we've done a little research, we've talked to the inventors, and it turns out they conceived of this invention before the public use date. 
and they reduced it to practice as after. So th they thought it up in their own mind in a complete fashion, um, meaning, meaning only a model needed to be built. It was so well thought up in their mind that now they only needed to be a to ha to build uh, a reduction to practice to complete the invention. And under uh, under this example, when the reduction to practice happens after after the day of the public use, you need to prove one third one another an additional element here, which we call continued diligence. And continued diligence has to go has to start the day before the prior art reference, and it has to continue re continued reasonable diligence until either a model is built or the constructive reduction to practice. So what is a model? A model is, uh, as we said, it's you know a working uh, example of the product. And uh, the court uh, will take that as long as the diligence continues. So this is what we call a diligence period. The diligence needs to be proven. Uh, and it'll stop, I it'll stop here if they can show a reduction of practice. Or it needs to continue until until they uh, file the patent application. And the reason a patent application is considered a reduction to practice um, is that it requires to invent to describe the invention in such a complete manner that would it would uh, enable one of ordinary skill in the art to make and use uh, the invention as claimed without undue experimentation. And thus, uh, it's as good as a working model in proving that uh, uh, that they, uh, uh, you know, that they were in possession of the invention and, and that it wasn't enabled. And so either a, a model or a patent application and, and the diligence period. If that's true, same here. This is not prior art. In case I forget, in a minute I'm going to start talking about secrecy and reverse engineering. On this on this side of the line up here, secrecy and re and reverse engineering don't play a role. Um, if I forget to say it, uh, just remember I said it. So when you go back and review, uh, but now let me talk about secrecy and reverse engineering. So same thing. Um, this is the third example, and let's find out if this is a prior art example or not. You find the prior public use in the form of a process performed by a company, uh, conception before, reduction to practice after. Um, now we now in this case we find out that uh, that that the diligence didn't start the day before, right? It didn't start here. No diligence. Um, so we have this uh, we have this potential prior art event, and the diligence didn't start. This could be prior art, and it it dep uh, and it depends it depends on secrecy. If this if this use is non-secret, then then this is prior art. So non-secret equals prior art. But if it's secret, then it's not prior art. So what does that mean? It means, well, one of the things we've talked about, about one of two ways, it, it, it has to be before the invention. The prior art has to be before the invention. But it also has to be accessible in some way, right? If that invention is, is done in secrecy, in other words, the employees of the company or the people uh, that are involved in performing the process that makes the commercial products that are sold into the marketplace, if they've all agreed not to disclose this to anyone, then that information is not accessible, right? It's not accessible because of the secrecy. And, th and therefore, it's only in the non-secret case that this is patent art, or prior art. Um, now, there's an exception to that. Let me just now, notice that secrecy didn't play a role up here. If you reduced to practice before, who cares about secrecy, right? Because the, in the, the invalidating event happened after the invention date. If you practice diligence from the day before all the way through the first reduction of practice, whether actual reduction of practice or filing of a patent application, then secrecy plays no role. 
Now let's talk about reverse engineering. The fourth example. Uh, you have a uh, same thing, filing date, boom, you have public use, you find the reference, they call their your attorney flip calls the other attorney and says, Hey, we found ref we found a uh, uh, use before the presumed uh, invention date, which is a constructive reduction to practice. The invention, the attorney on the other side says, "Too bad, we did conception, and we reduced it to practice, either actually or uh, by filing a patent application. Uh, but we didn't, we didn't do the diligence thing, right? Um, until uh, after." And you say, but you, you didn't do the diligence thing till after. And the lawyer says, hey, you know what? But we checked into it. That company over there, they were operating under secrecy. And therefore, even though our diligence didn't start, this information was not available in here, right? It wasn't accessible to the public. Um, that's this example here, right? There was secrecy. You couldn't even learn about it until, you know, sometime later. Uh, and therefore, our reduction of practice here or here is a valid invention date because the information became accessible after the constructive reduction of practice or the actual, whichever the case may be. Um, and therefore, and therefore, that's not an invalidating event. This event here, this commercial use with the with the products, uh, commercial use behind closed doors in secrecy with the products being sold in the marketplace uh, and you uh, and you turn around and you say hey too bad you say we can reverse engineer those products so what that means is that even even if there's uh, secrecy if the products can be reverse engineered then although the process is it's a process claim you're trying to invalidate so you need to show that the process uh, was accessible but you show that instead that hey those products that were sold in the marketplace at all that time before your reduction to practice, whether it be the uh, uh, the actual or the or, or or the constructive, hey, boom! All those products, we were able to look at those products, and by looking at them, uh, or better said, the public would have been able to look at those, even if we didn't look at them at the time. They could have looked at them, and they could have figured out what, not what the products are, but the process that was used to make them. So if you can reverse engineer the products and show that the uh, that the um, process that was behind closed door secrecy uh, was disc was uh, something that you would understand, then guess what? Um, it's prior art, right? Because you were able to figure out how this thing worked before the invention day. So those are the four examples, and that's how secrecy plays into it. Uh, Dan Bellhill, Bell Certified, thanks for stopping by.